Our recipe today is a very delightful and delicious zucchini cake recipe and we are working on this cake recipe with sourdough and of course what we are saying is that we want to get the benefits of sourdough which will work in your butter breaking it down further to make it easier for your body to digest because it simply works on the ingredients doing that because of the long ferment and i'm trusting you will enjoy this particular cake recipe zucchini is usually just wonderful and especially when you follow the recipe you are going to enjoy this particular cake that many of the people who have tasted this cake when i've made it they have enjoyed it a great deal so join me for today's recipe that i trust you will enjoy as well and especially when you work on it with sourdough because you will get all the benefits of sourdough Welcome to Recipes and Hospitality with Clara. This is a channel where we share recipes that are simple, easy to do at home with ingredients toned down just like this one to enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. And if you're new here and this is the kind of content you like, kindly consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, you'll be notified every time I upload new content. I upload this kind of content that is very simple to make with ingredients that are most likely available right where you are. And of course, if you're wondering what sourdough is, or you're on the fence, not yet sure what to do and how to start, I will link in the description below a simple recipe of how I make my sourdough starter from scratch. And I made mine a few months ago and it's still growing, going strong. I'm working with it on several recipes because I also, I also explained in that video how I maintain my sourdough starter. In case you have issues with the sour taste of sourdough I need to also say that in cakes you may not experience the sourness a lot thankfully you have the benefits of the sourdough starter working in your dough or in your butter but you may not feel that sourness as much so it's a wonderful option for you to start your sourdough journey in case you're just starting with sourdough for the first time as is always our custom on this channel we will pray and trust the Lord to grant us a fruitful time as we journey through today's recipe Indeed, Father, we pray that you will be with me and my viewer, and I pray that you will be glorified as we work on this recipe, and our prayer is that you will be with us also so that all we do in the kitchen, all we do as we practice hospitality will serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In a suitable bowl, we will begin by combining the dry ingredients, that's three cups of all-purpose flour, a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon cinnamon spice, as well as a teaspoon of mixed spice. We will combine that with a wooden spoon until evenly combined. Set aside. Then in a separate bowl, we will add in the wet ingredients, not all of them, but we will begin by adding cooking oil, three quarter to one cup sourdough starter. I will usually use about three quarter cups, but if I have a lot of sourdough, I can even use a full cup. And then we will add in also half a cup of milk. I will combine that until well combined and then begin to add the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients and mix this with my wooden spoon until we get that very thick heavy dough. So combine this until everything comes together really well and then we will go to the next step. It's a rather heavy dough and that's because some of the ingredients we are not going to put in. To put them in at this point we will put them in after the bulk ferment. So once everything is well incorporated, we are going to cover with a clean kitchen towel and allow our dough to bulk ferment. I was doing this in the evening, so I allowed it to bulk ferment overnight and even the morning, and so it fermented or bulk fermented or rested for over 12 hours which was okay for me because I know my sourdough starter was working in the dough 
So now this is the next day. Like I said, you can see it has risen somewhat. And now we are simply going to mix in the rest of the ingredients. We will mix in our zucchini or courgette that I have just finely grated on the finer side of my grater. Usually I am working with these three cups, but with zucchini, if I have two cups, I'm good to go. If I have one and a half cups, I'm good to go. Usually I will just mix in and then keep adding some water a little at a time just to get the right consistency now that zucchini has a lot of fluid in it. But the full recipe, of course, will call for three cups of zucchini. And then we will have our grated lemon rind that I've also grated around my lemon on the finer side of the grater. By the way, lemon rind is the star ingredient in this recipe. If you leave it out, this recipe will not taste as good as it is doing. It's my sister who introduced me to this recipe and she tried working with it without the lemon rind and it just <laughs> it didn't taste very good as she tells me. So she told me don't try. So that's what we are going to add into our dough. The zucchini, the lemon rind, I'm adding in also the vanilla extract or essence if you have essence. And then I'm going to add in the egg. This recipe also calls for two eggs, but usually now that I just realized I have run out of eggs and I had one left, this also worked very well. So we will stir that. As you can see, it was a rather heavy dough, so stirring can be quite some work, but it won't take you long. Just make sure that everything comes together. And like I told you, zucchini has a lot of fluid in it, so it's going to bring this dough or back to the normal butter cake that you're used to. You know, that thick, heavy paste rather than that thick dough that we had started with the previous night. So you can see this is where we have gotten after stirring it for some time, beating it with our wooden spoon. So we've gotten it to a thick, nice, heavy paste. Uh, we didn't have to add any fluid. So we are basically done with working on our butter. We are now going to work with pans. Mine are about 7 inches in diameter, but they could be pans that are 8 inches or slightly wider now that the dough will even cook faster. I wanted to show you what I'm doing with one of them. My daughter suggested this because I usually do this and I thought, why not? Let me show you what I do sometimes with cakes to make them less <laughs> greasy, you know, less uh, messy when you have to grease the pan with some fat you know or much i will line my pan with baking paper of course the final product will not come out as smooth you know on the sides but at least you don't have to have you know uh, the the messiness of using or greasing with fat or much so basically cut the baking paper like I'm doing uh, to make sure you have just enough so that you don't waste. If there's any waste, it's minimal. So once you have measured out ensuring then that you have the right amount of baking paper in your pan, you know, just the one that covers the pan, go ahead and uh, use your hand to make sure that it fits well into the pan and then clip off or cut off the extra pieces. This other pan we will do the normal way we do. Usually grease the pan with some marge or fat. I'm using a teaspoon that's usually sufficient for this size of pan and then of course dust it with some flour. So once you've dusted get out the extra and there you have your tin ready. So we will basically pour this into our tin pans. I like to use two pans especially on when I'm baking on top of my gas cooker so that they can cook faster but you can still also just use one wide pan especially like if you use an 11 10 to 11 inch pan that would still be okay because I've done that in the past but I like to just divide it into two to have it have height now that the pans, the cake to have height now that the pans are smaller, but also for them to cook faster when they are cooking in two pans. So ensure to try and divide into two equal parts and then we will now cover them and take them 
to our gas stove ready for us to bake without an oven and I'll show you how in a short while. So as you know there are different sizes of burners on your gas stove. There is the wider one that we are going to use and then there is the smallest that we are going to use. There are two very small ones. I'm working with one that is slightly bigger than the other but when I use either of the smaller ones, I will use the same principle I'm using here because actually it's easier to work with the smaller ones that you will see. So we will place our cake first on this wider one and allow it on high heat for 20 to 30 seconds just to heat up the pan and then we will reduce the flame, not this way. The lowest it has been designed to get to its lowest by your manufacturer that is still too high, your cake is going to burn. So we will take it back up and reduce it as though we are switching off and get it to the lowest as you've seen the kind that if you blew hard on it it would actually go off that's the kind that will bake your cake then for this small burner I will just allow it on full flame 20 to 30 seconds to heat up the pan and then I will reduce it to the lowest as has been designed by your manufacturer usually for those tiny <laughs> burners your cake will bake slightly faster for the slightly uh, wider burner you know they are both small but one is slightly wider at least for my burner but uh, the other one will also bake very well so this one that we placed on the smaller burner interestingly baked fast for 40 minutes and as you can see now it has firmed up on the surface usually the cake is slightly darker now that we have used sourdough but it's very tasty the tester is coming out clear if you don't have that kind of a tester you can also just use a sharp knife to insert into the cake if it comes out clear it's ready and the good thing with uh, using baking paper you can see it's very easy to get it out of the pan but because we want it to brown on the surface you don't have to do this if you don't mind that you know maybe you want to just ice or frost the top and you're good to go but because I want it to brown on that top surface I'm going to carefully uh, kind of peel off the baking paper once I've peeled off I'm I'm going to turn it over onto a clean lid and then peel off the remaining part, you know that lower part where they peel off the baking paper. So you can see how it looks very nice. So that was about 40 minutes. Then I'm going to turn it over again onto another clean lid so that we have the part that is still cream or that is still not browned coming back on top. So once we have that, we will now take our pan that we have baked with that is still hot. Then we are going to gently slide it over onto our cake again so that that part that hasn't browned can go to the bottom of the pan for it to bake for 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes because the cake is ready. We only need that part to brown. So that's it. So we will allow it just 10 minutes and then it will be ready. Now we went ahead to check or oh, before that I'm going to cover this but I'll not cover it completely because we don't want the steam that is coming from the cake to go on the lid and drop back onto our cake and make it wet. So when you cover just slide it back uh, a bit so that the steam can escape as we give our cake 10 minutes. This one I'll give it 10 more minutes because I'm not sure you can see but there's a part that is still wet. We want it firm. You know it's cream of course not browned on top but it is firm. So 10 minutes later when the other one was ready you can see it's on that other corner. This one I turned it over onto a clean lid. Somehow I lost that footage where I did it but usually you just turn the cake over onto a clean lid and then as you saw it looked very nice. I turned it over again on another clean lid so that that cream part could come back to the top. I gently slid the pan over the cakes so that the side that hasn't browned can go to the bottom of the pan. You notice I'm using a different dish cloth because the one I started with is too small. The pan was starting to burn my fingers when I used the smaller dish cloth. So also for this one I returned it onto the fire, allowed it to cook for just 10 minutes so that it can brown on that side. 
and then we were good to go with both the cakes. I removed it from the pan, transferred it onto on a clean lid and allowed both cakes to cool so that as I'm showing you the cakes, they have been cooling for some time and we are ready to look at them and cut into them. So basically that's how I bake my cakes without an oven, including sourdough cakes. And I use sourdough especially because I want the health benefits of sourdough. And if you are struggling with the sourness of sourdough, interestingly in cakes, you will almost not feel it. But at least you know that I have the benefit of baking with sourdough and hence having healthy cakes. So that's how our cakes stand out. Very delightful. So this, I can assure you, is a very delicious, delightful cake that you will enjoy. Soft on the interior with all the benefits of sourdough. So try this and enjoy. Enhance your hospitality for the glory of God. You could check out this developing playlist right here because I'm going to include many other cake recipes where I have worked on sourdough because I'm sure you would want all the benefits of sourdough. So you could check out these recipes. I trust you will enjoy them as well. So thank you so much for joining me. Look out for our next recipe. Again, very simple, easy to make at home. A recipe that I trust you will enjoy as well. And until that next video, see you then or in this one's right here.